Hey guys, in this mechanical explanation video, we're going to take a look at the last portion of the arm swing known as arm flip up. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into it here. Here I have a zoomed in view of Jacob deGrom that gives us a good visual as to what arm flip up is, when it occurs, and what we are looking for as far as the arm flip up mechanic goes. So first off, what is arm flip up? Arm flip up is the final portion of the arm swing where the shoulder is externally rotating as the player proceeds into front foot strike. What we want to see here is that as the player makes contact with their lead leg at front foot strike, the player's shoulder has externally rotated into a range between 45 and 90 degrees. If the player's arm is within the 0 to 44 degree range, then we would consider the throwing arm to be late into front foot strike. Being late with the throwing arm could lead to numerous problems as the player advances into the arm acceleration phase that occurs after front foot strike. All right guys, in the next portion of this video, I wanna cover some of the main issues that are caused by being late with the arm into front foot strike. So the first one we generally see is it becomes harder for players to achieve an ex uh, the acceptable range of arm layback during the arm acceleration phase. That's between 160 and 185 degrees. I'll uh, put a couple pros up so you can kind of see what that looks like uh, ultimately to be within that 160 to 185 degree range. And just so you know, when you're looking at that, um, arm layback is a mechanical concept that is ultimately the combination of thoracic extension, uh, scapular posterior tilt, as well as true shoulder external rotation. So it's not just the shoulder that's ultimately getting into that crazy 160 to 185 degree range, um, but the shoulder external rotation that we you know, get into front foot strike through arm flip up ultimately helps us get into that 160 to 185 degree range. So kind of what am I talking about here? If we're one of those players that's late into arm flip up, uh, you know, late with their arm flip up into front foot strike, then ultimately that player has to go from zero, let's just say zero degrees, all the way to 160 degrees while their trunk is rotating and they're accelerating the arm in order to get back into that acceptable range of arm layback. As to where if you're on time, um, you know, into front foot strike with the arm, let's just say you're at 70 degrees, right? So we're somewhere in here, it becomes a little easier to get into that range and it becomes a lot cleaner um, and a lot more natural just to find that, um, you know, that ultimately that arm layback that we're all looking for uh, in a lot cleaner way and a lot more healthy way and a lot safer way. So ultimately, uh, you know, bullet one is it's essentially, it's a velocity killer. If we're not able to get into that 160 to 185 degree range that we see all the pros at, ultimately that's probably gonna limit our throwing velocity a little bit. Um, and, and you know, ultimately will we'll probably lead to uh, some other issues as a result of being late that we don't wanna see. So bullet number one ultimately is a velocity killer. Um, let's look at bullet number two. Bullet number two, um, it kind of leads me into my next point by talking about bullet number one. It is more stressful on the shoulder when the arm is late into front foot strike. So what do I mean by that? Well, kind of how we talked about, if you are late into front foot strike, let's say you're at five degrees here, and you have to get all the way to 160 to get into arm layback, what has to happen? Well, there has to be a violent slamming of the shoulder into shoulder external rotation in order to get, uh, in order to essentially get into that range by the time we begin to internally rotate into ball release. So, what actually happens is there's this violent slamming ultimately just to go back into internal rotation and that becomes very hard on the shoulder. So guys that have a shoulder impingement issue or they have just general shoulder pain while throwing, if this is something we diagnose during their analysis and we kind of see this early on and they're complaining about shoulder pain, this is something we're probably going to try and fix early on uh, to ultimately see if this is the cause of their shoulder pain. Um, and just from personal experience, I've had multiple players I've worked with that this has actually kind of resolved their shoulder impingement or their shoulder pain by fixing this and ultimately allowing them to kind of go, get into a more clean uh, version of arm layback by being at front foot strike at about 80 degrees and getting into that 160 degree range. Um, it's a lot cleaner. You only have to go about 80 degrees there as opposed to going 160 degrees and slamming into shoulder external rotation. So number two is ultimately a, um, Kind of a, it's an injury prevention mechanism. Now I'm not gonna say that this is gonna fix all shoulder impingements or all shoulder issues because it's, it's definitely not, but it's something to look at and something that we definitely take a, a close look at. So to recap, ultimately number one, it becomes harder for players to get into that range of arm layback during arm acceleration. So by being at you know zero to 44 degrees, it becomes really hard to get all the way there during um, arm acceleration by the time we gotta go into internal rotation. Uh, to release the baseball. And then number two, um, it's a lot more stressful on the shoulder when the arm is late 
because we're having to go from that zero degrees, then slamming uh, in a violent manner back to try and get into that 160 degree range, um, ultimately to go into internal rotation to throw. So those are kind of the two main issues that we see that are caused by being late with the arm. Uh, again, number one will kill your velocity. And then number two, it could be a potential uh, injury prevention mechanism that we kind of utilize um, to, with, for players that have shoulder pain um, to ultimately help them throw in a cleaner manner and in a safer way um, when getting into that arm layback. Kind of the last thing I'll add about number two is, is we see more athletes uh, get hurt as a result of external shoulder external rotation than internal rotation. So if that's the case, um, then ultimately maybe this is something that's uh, not, sp not spoken on enough within the industry is that, hey, if you're laid here and you're slamming back, well, that external rotation, that violet ex uh, external rotation of the shoulder could potentially be the cause of a lot of uh, shoulder injuries. So um, I'll kind of leave you with that here. And next we're going to take a look at a couple of uh, my personal player uh, examples here and a couple guys that are late with their arm into front foot strike and kind of some of the uh, issues that we see as a result of them being late uh, with the arm into front foot strike. All right, guys, next I want to take a look at two players uh, that I've worked with in the past that uh, when they first sent in their uh, mechanics or, you know, the video of them throwing from the back view, I noticed that they were late um, into front foot strike with the throwing arm. And, you know, ultimately they weren't getting into that 45 to 90 degree range of arm flip up. Um, so these are, go ahead and take a look at these two guys. We'll get them paused here at front foot strike. And what do we kind of see here? So um, similar to what I covered in the beginning of this video, we're going to see some common things here. Ultimately, first thing uh, that we see is that obviously they're not in that range that we're looking for. So if we kind of draw an angle there, uh, we're gonna see, I think uh, this example on the left was about 30 degrees. And then uh, this example over here, we can actually see that he's so late that he actually has a negative angle there. Um, I think he's like negative 12 degrees or so um, into front foot strike. And so we'll kind of see some of the things that are caused as a result of ultimately them being late. And we're gonna specifically focus on the second bullet point from the last slide, um, which is ultimately that the players uh, are gonna have more of a violent action into, um, into that arm layback range as a result of, as they're starting to initiate rotation, they're having to slam back uh, to get into that 160 to 185 degree range. So let's go ahead and get them here um, into the next phase. So here we have them at, again, front foot strike. So now let's go ahead and watch what happens here. If we go to the next frame, we can see they're kind of flipping up there, but it's a little late. They're already beginning to rotate. Now, what do I mean by that? As we can see here on this example on the left, where are the shoulders at front foot strike? The shoulders are where they're supposed to be. They're right at the target here. Shoulders are right at the, uh, right at the catcher in the target. That's perfect. Now, what do we see in the next frame? Now we're going into the arm acceleration phase meaning the torso is starting to rotate. Now we can see the shoulders are pointed off over here and the shoulders are starting to open up over there. So now what are we seeing? So we're seeing that the shoulder is now externally rotating, uh, externally rotating, but notice how violent this move becomes. So now we're having to slam, especially look at the uh, example on the right. We can see the arm is slamming back into arm layback. Uh, going from negative 12 degrees, probably all the way to about 170 degrees of arm layback, which is ultimately very violent on the shoulder and is ultimately going to cause some arm issues. So this is something, if you kind of look at these next couple frames, you can really see how violent of a manu uh, maneuver that is with the shoulder in order to get into um, that maximal arm layback. So what, we, what would we want to see here again at this position? We'd like to see on this left example, we'd like to see that arm more in, you know, somewhere in that range. That would be a nice, um, you know, good, good place to be there. We can see that this athlete gets there in that next frame. So there, if he was there, um, and oftentimes it's just one frame of difference. If he was there um, one frame earlier, he would be perfect. So a lot of times it's just the adjustment of one frame of difference. Now let's look at the second athlete. He would need about two frames of difference. So we would want him about where he is here, two frames earlier. So if we go back two frames, that's where we would want him. And so as you can see, as a result, he's very late with his throwing arm. We'd want him there at front foot strike. And ultimately it's gonna cause that violent torque on the shoulder where he's, he's ultimately, like I talked about in the previous portion of the video, where he's ultimately having to slam back into shoulder external rotation um, into arm layback 
as opposed to just letting it happen naturally um, by going from about a 70, 80, 90 degree range into that 160 degree range um, and just letting it happen more uh, in a clean way. Um, we can see this violent uh, action here with the shoulders slamming back as we go into arm acceleration. So two examples there, just kind of wanted to give you two player examples, kind of what to look for um, and ultimately what being late into front foot strike looks like. Um, so now let's go ahead and take a look at two pro examples that do this, uh, this, port, this mechanical concept or they perform this mechanical concept extremely well. All right guys, so here I got two pro examples. Um, we can see here on the left is Jacob deGrom and then on the right I have uh, Justin Berlander. Uh, both of these guys have won Cy Young Award. So let's go ahead and get them into front foot strike and see what they got going on with uh, the arm, their arm flip up and ultimately if they are late or if they're on time. So what do we see here? We see that the shoulders are pointed at the target. Again, shoulders are pointed at the target exactly where we wanna be in the front foot strike. And what do we see with the throwing arm? Here we can see that DeGrom is clearly uh, flipped up with that throwing arm and we can also see here with Verlander as well, he's clearly flipped up with that throwing arm. Um, both are not all the way to 90 degrees, but I would say Verlander is definitely in the 80s here, and DeGrom's probably right at the 80 degree, maybe high 70s. I think I have him at around 76 degrees or so, uh, based on three different clips I've analyzed of him. So ultimately what we see here is that both of these guys are flipped up, their arm is successfully um, on time. It's well within that 45 to 90 degree range. We see that they're on time here with their shoulder external rotation into front foot strike, meaning their arm flip up. And ultimately they've set themselves up in a great place to, uh, to where as they begin to go into arm acceleration, they're gonna get that natural clean layback without that violent slamming of the uh, shoulder into external rotation. And they're ultimately just gonna allow uh, that body to rotate across that center axis and let that arm just really stretch into that shoulder external rotation in a clean way. So. Here's two pro examples uh, of exactly what we would want to see when I'm analyzing our players. We can see that they're well beyond uh, that 45 degree range. So 45 would be probably somewhere in there, maybe a little less. We can see that they're well beyond that. Um, DeGrom's probably all the way almost to about 80 there. Um, and we can just see this is a perfect, two perfect examples of guys that are flipped up into front foot strike. As to where we compare with our two player examples, we can see that they're a little flatter and less um, you know, externally rotated with the shoulder. So, here are two good pro examples um, and two uh, exactly what we want to see with players submitting in videos for analysis. So uh, you can go ahead and use these guys as an example of what we would want um, you to be performing into front foot strike with the, uh, with the throwing shoulder. All right guys, and last thing I wanted to cover in this video is just uh, I wanted to show you guys that I performed a case study when it came to this mechanic. Um, I went ahead and analyzed the 15 hardest throwers uh, throughout the 2022 season. Um, I know that we're coming to the end of the 2023 season now, but I went ahead and just looked back one year. And ultimately, this was the breakdown we had. So here you can see uh, a list of the 15 hardest throwers, and you can kind of see where they were at. Um, we'll, I'll go ahead and recap this for you. So we had one player that was uh, 44 degrees and below. Uh, that player was Andres Munoz. Um, you can see that he averaged between the three clips I analyzed them on at 38 degrees of external rotation into front foot strike. Um, you could then see that four players were between 45 and 54 degrees in the front foot strike. Then we had one player between 55 and 64 degrees. Then we had three players between 65 and 74, two players between 75 and 84. And then lastly, between 85 and 90, we had four players. So you can see that um, essentially nine of those players uh, were above 65 degrees. So. Um, as a coach, I would recommend try and get to above 65 degrees. That's where I would say you're really in a good position um, and where you should probably be to allow yourself to uh, externally rotate in a safe and proper manner into arm layback. But you know, as long as you're above that 45 degrees, then we consider that acceptable. Um, and ultimately we would pass you on your analysis if we saw you there. But again, we definitely like our guys to be more in that 65 to 90 degree range. We find it to be a, a safer position to be in um, when beginning to go into arm acceleration. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and you know, if you got any questions, definitely leave uh, me some comments and we can go ahead and uh, I'll respond to those as soon as possible. And we can kind of uh, go ahead and get a little bit of a collaboration on some of these key points that I touched on in this video. Again, thanks for watching and uh, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button um, if you want to see more mechanical explanation videos like this. Again, thanks for watching. Have a good one.